Hey guys, Carmine Bianco, wagerstalk.com with a great deal for you guys. As you know, the 2020 Euros finally kick off on Friday. First of 51 games uh, over the next month. Uh, all games will be broadcast on ESPN in the States and CTV and TSN up here in Canada. You can get every single futures bet, prop bet, gameplay, and totals play, including 5% plays that I released in the tournament for only $199. As an added bonus, I am now going to add all Copa America games. That's another tournament that's going on at the same time. Another 28 possible games. If you've already bought the package, don't worry about it. It'll be included in there for you. Head over to wagertalk.com and my tappers page for more information. As always, good luck with your wagers, guys. Welcome in, guys. Welcome back right here to Wager Talk TV. I'm joined by Carmine Bianco as well, but I also have a new friend behind me just because I, I know I'm pretty alone with the Montreal Canadiens, so I thought I'd get a new person to cheer on with me. And well, what better person than the, that nice lady behind me? I'm Andrew McGinnis, the host of Puck Time, joined by Carmine Bianco. We have one matchup now to talk about every single day. We are into the final four. I'm going to go to Carmine first to uh, let us know how hey, his weekend was. Working, the Euros guys? have begun. So I'll ask Carmine, how was your weekend, Carm? Hey, guys. Uh, yeah, it, uh, weekend was great, Andrew. Uh, uh, you know, finally, as as you know, up here uh, in Ontario, north of the border, the patios opened up on Friday just in time for the Euros, which I'm excited about, and NHL obviously going up. So any of the Montreal fans that are here in the greater Toronto area can now go out and uh, have some pints and watch tonight's game uh, especially um i, I want to touch on something real quick before we get into hockey uh, so on uh, friday if you didn't to follow my twitter uh you know i went out to watch the italy turkey game with three of my friends uh you know the restaurant industry here has been absolutely ravaged i have friends who lost their businesses uh, and uh, friends who lost their jobs uh whether they're bartenders servers or what have you so uh, in opening the patio season, I thought it would be a, a great thing to do something that I've seen done before, which is called the Siri tip. Uh, I'm going to show you the video real quickly if we can get the video up there. All right, uh, he's going to take me up on the Hey Siri challenge. The bill is $344. You're in? All right. Hey Siri, pick a number from 1 to 344. $326, that's your tip. Yo. There you go. Punch it in. So, uh, it, was, punch it, it, in it was just a cool little idea to, to help the server. Now, uh, if Siri had said a low number, that the server was never going to get stiffed on the, the bill. He was always going to get 20% or more on the bill, but he had a chance. He doesn't know this. So it really is, and that's why I wanted to show the video, a gamble thing. You want to see if these guys want to gamble it up with their tip on this. And this guy was gung-ho, and it worked out great for him. Um, you know, I posted it just for some of my friends on Twitter who I talked to, and it sort of picked up a life of its own and went viral with uh, almost 100,000 views. Chad Johnson, Ocho Cinco, retweeting it as well, too. It was pretty cool in that sense. You get a couple of guys who obviously um, have to troll you anyway. Some guy, you know, some Atlanta fan who in his little um, uh, racing car bed on his laptop had to insult me. But it's all good. I just hit the, the, the mute button or the block button on these guys. It was an actually great thing for the industry. And a lot of people actually started to do the same thing and tagged me in the post. So anything that helps out. Uh, our industry and the economy is good with me. Uh, that's it for that. I just wanted to touch on that. More important thing now is the Montreal Canadiens uh, and uh, the Vegas Golden Knights. So, Andrew, back to you, my friend. Sorry, I was going to say I love that video, Carm. I saw it uh, pretty much right away uh, after you posted it. I saw it going around different networks and uh, a lot of people getting publicity um and retweeting it and i think i wasn't surprised by it i know the kind of guy you are and i think a lot of people also knew the kind of guy you are but what i'm the most proud of and excited about carm is that i know you're not posting that 
you know, for your PR to make yourself look good. Like you said in, in the last part of, you know, your, your message there was that it's kind of pay it forward. You know, it's letting other people know that after you see that it should make you feel good and see what you can do. And maybe not everybody can fork up the $300, but to give something else and give a little bit extra or to be kind to these servers, because like you said, especially here in Canada and different parts of the America and all kinds of places around the world, they were out of work. So, uh, you know, just a great pass it along type of message that you were sending there. And uh, I tried to do the very similar thing when I was out for drinks with my girlfriend on Saturday night. So it's a great message, Carm. I'm happy for you to get the uh, publicity you deserve and also happy that you cash an Italy ticket on the same day. So what a great day for you. Uh, the Euros have been great. And uh, so it was smiles all around for you. Let's jump in. Uh, we, we had the game yesterday, uh, Tampa Bay and the Islanders, but we won't really touch on it too much because we're going to talk about that tomorrow. But uh, Canadians and the Golden Knights. Uh, Canadians are one of the biggest underdogs in a semifinal in history. Uh, I believe the biggest in like almost 50 years, 40 years underdog in a series. They are plus 225 to open up game one. Golden Knights minus 275. The puck line minus one and a half plus 105, plus one and a half for the Canadians, minus 125, total sits at five and a half. Karm, look, I'm going to try and keep this unbiased as possible because I, you know, I try and you've heard me all year, give credit to other teams against the Canadians, talk about different things. But I think it's about time that I sit here and tell everybody out there that called me a homer, they're still here. They won the North. They made it here for a reason. They didn't just squeak by the Jets. They won four nothing, but against the Vegas Golden Knights, this is a whole different task of its own. I'm curious for your opening thoughts, your your first impressions, your first thoughts that came to your head when you heard of this matchup coming to, uh, you know, reality. Yeah, well, uh, Andrew, you know I'm going to be uh, not biased towards a Canadian team. I'm going to be sort of biased towards a Vegas team, but it's not going to determine how I, uh, I pick these games. I would love to see Vegas... Excuse me. I'd love to see Vegas in the Stanley Cup Finals for one and one reason only. Uh, Marco D'Angelo and Brian Leonard are season ticket holders for the Vegas Golden Knights, and I would be in Vegas July July 5th to the 12th at the same time as the first couple of games of the Stanley Cup Finals, and uh, and I'm hoping one of them is going to take me to that game. With that said, I'm looking forward to the series. I don't think it's uh, uh, the price should be where it is right now. Uh, it, it's one of those things where everyone just keeps doubting the Canadians and they keep proving them wrong. Maybe uh, are they a team of destiny? I don't know. But by the same means, everyone said that, uh, or most people said Tampa Bay should roll over the Islanders and and look at the effort put forth by the Islanders yesterday in that game against Tampa Bay, a very good one. Uh, this first time, the, the obviously the Canadians are venturing out of Canada or any Canadian team is to to play a game in the States and against this Vegas team. This this first game is going to be tight. This Montreal team is going to play the exact same way they played the final three games against Toronto. They're going to play the exact same way they played the four games in sweeping Winnipeg. They're playing some very good hockey right now. Carey Price is seeing the puck very well. It's just a matter of line matching again and whether they can do it against uh, this Vegas team. Uh, you're not being a homer by thinking that Montreal is has has a shot in this series. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, no one gave him a shot against Toronto, myself included. Uh, against Winnipeg, I kind of joked around about the Montreal or sorry Winnipeg in three comment <laughs> to you, but they played extremely well. Uh, I, I want to watch Game One. Uh, you know, I'm not going to have a play up on this game. I'm going to watch it and just see how uh, the game unfolds and if Montreal plays extremely well did something to carry forward maybe to handicapping game two or not uh i'm looking at the uh, i'm, I'm going to go sort of counterintuitive here a lot of people think this is going to be a low scoring game I'm, I'm looking the other way i think there's gonna be goals in this game uh so i i'll likely go over the total here and you're getting plus money on five and a half i think it's plus 115 120 that's probably where i'm going to lean on this game andrew I wouldn't blame you for for looking at that, Carmen. You know, I, I think on a large scale, this series will be low scoring. But, you know, one thing I want to say, and one angle I wanted to mention to a lot of people, 
um, you know, have been discussing the fact that Canadians are doing this traveling. They're they're traveling and they're leaving Canada. Like Canada is somehow, you know, at the opposite end of the world as America. You know, it's been kind of comedic to me to hear people say the Canadians are leaving Canada for the first time this year. They have to go out of the country. Like we're literally neighbors. Canada and America are in the same continent. We're neighbor countries. And let's not forget, they were traveling out west all year long in Canada to Calgary, Vancouver, Edmonton, even Winnipeg is quite the travel. You know, I think that the fact that, you know, quite a big of an ar- bit of an argument was the fact that they had to travel out west. Vegas also has to travel uh, to Canada as well. It's not like just one team is traveling. So it's the first time, of course, they are leaving Canada. Uh, one thing people have mentioned, though, is kind of the whole Vegas flu thing with you know, the players going out and walking around and going to the casinos. But I just don't really see that happening because I really do believe in the leadership factor uh, of the Montreal Canadiens. But the path is very interesting. Many of you might have seen the tweet that Wager Talk put out prior to our show about the winning streaks that both these teams are on. They've forgotten what the word losing means. They both haven't lost games in quite some time now. And they've they've done it in different ways. You know, coming back from, from being... Um, you know, scoring their goals late, scoring their goals early. But I want to bring up a little graphic here and a little spot, if I can, about the Montreal Canadiens and how everybody is saying that they're only winning because of Carey Price. If you look at it, it's last seven games, 7-0 and with 24 goals, only 12 allowed, power play percentage 31% and 100% on the penalty kill. Now, everybody out there is saying the only reason why they're winning these games is because of Carey Price. It's quite weird. Is he their MVP? Absolutely. But every team has their best player. Where I'm going to go in this series and, and where I'm kind of looking is very similar to where I was looking, Carm, for the Montreal Canadiens against the Vegas or the Toronto Maple Leafs. If you look at this roster for the Vegas Golden Knights, we have Matthias Janmark, Nicholas Waugh, uh, Alex Tuck, and the fourth line, Colasar, Reeves, and Carrier. So if we can see... Philip Deneau, Brendan Gallagher, um, the top line like that, even the second line, continue the four check that they have, then I believe if they shut down the patch ready of the world, the Mark Stones, those guys, then I believe they could have success. I'm curious to how the depth battle will go. And I've had so many people laugh at me when I've said the Canadians have depth. All of these players are averaging equal ice time. Not really one player has a a larger amount of ice time than even a fourth line player on the Montreal Canadiens. The confidence the coaching staff has to roll out every single line equally creates stamina, creates speed and constant pressure. There is zero fatigue from them. But having said that, I am worried because while the Maple Leafs, their star players didn't show up. I do believe Patch Reddy and Mark Stone and Marcheseau and those guys will show up which to Carmine's point is why we could definitely see some goals where I'm going to go here. And the play I want to give out on this show is the over five and a half games in the series. And I'm curious to see what Carm's thoughts are on this wager to me. um, Obviously you, you know, I'm, I'm backing the Canadians to at least hang around in this series, but I think it'll be competitive. And I think asking this series to get to six games isn't asking a lot. I think this series is very, very overpriced. And getting over five and a half games in a semifinal team with a very strong defensive team. And like everyone's pointing out, one of the strongest goaltenders, I think is a pretty good wager. Karim, what are your thoughts on that wager? Uh, I have no problem with it going uh, over five and a half games, Andrew. I would like it to end in six. I did take the one bet I did make on this uh, on the series when it came out was the Vegas Golden Knights on the uh, series handicap, which was one and a half games. I didn't want to lay that price uh, on them to win the series. Uh, One and a half. So I took them one and a half games, minus 130. Uh, It's now up to like minus 150 as we head into game one. Uh, Obviously, in order to catch that bet, the series has to be won by Vegas and won in six games or less. And that's probably where it, it ends, to be honest with you, Andrew. Um, we don't know how, uh, you know, when we look at sort of strength of schedule with these teams, we don't know how strong the North was. This has been a weird, uh, year, obviously with the realignment. Um, and 
maybe people aren't giving much, you know, the maybe people aren't giving a Montreal the respect and saying, well, they beat a Leafs team that hasn't won a first round series in 17, now 18 years. And then they beat a Winnipeg team that knocked off Edmonton. You can only beat who they put in front of you at the end of the day. So uh, we'll see how strong, uh, you know, that division was or how it shakes out in how they perform maybe against this Vegas team who uh, did have to face Colorado, did have to face uh, uh, Minnesota. And those are two very good teams. Uh, in a regular year, would some of those teams in the North have made the playoffs? Uh, I'm not entirely sure uh, more than two, maybe three would have made the playoffs uh, of the 16 that uh, make the playoffs each and every year. Uh, would Minnesota say, uh, would Minnesota and Colorado have made the playoffs? Yes, they would. 100% they would have been in the top 16. So strength of schedule is something that factors into it. Uh, listen, I hope it's a good series. At the end of the day, I, you know, I, it's Vegas that's going to win this series in uh, in my eyes, and they're going to do it in six or less. So you can cash your five and a half. I can cash my Vegas in six or less uh, if that goes six and it ends there. How's that? Well, how do you think it is for a Canadians fan? I don't love it. I love when you win bets and make money, but I mean, I'm not going to say I'm not going to say I best of luck, really. But uh, I hope you win all of your bets for the rest of the year. Besides any against the Canadians, uh, I wanted to mention that though, Carm. You bring you you bring it up, Carm, uh, about the strength of schedule and or just about the divisions in general. Everybody wants to talk about how the North Division is the weakest division, and I've looked at it from a larger scale and said, from a top-heavy standpoint, maybe that was the case, but. Let's not forget which division out of all of these divisions had the Kings, had the Sharks, had the Ducks. The uh, Montreal Canadiens didn't have the Ducks to play, you know, eight times a year. They didn't have the San Jose Sharks to play eight to ten times a year. You know, Ottawa Senators became very competitive towards the end of the year. And then everyone wants to say the Canadians barely even limped their way into the playoffs because of all their overtime loss points, they're undefeated in the playoffs in overtime. I hate three-on-three -three overtime. It's not hockey. Five-on-five -five overtime, they haven't lost yet. So for the whole argument about the Canadian division being the weakest division, let's not forget, you know, every week or two, Vegas Golden Knights walk in, they get to play the Ducks, the Sharks, the Coyotes, the Kings. I don't know, Karen, what do you think about that? No, I understand what you're saying. And I'm saying to you, we'll see whether it's a weak division or not. Uh, let's see how they stand up. But they were underperforming teams, teams that maybe performed well during the regular season, just didn't perform well in the playoffs. The Edmonton Oilers, this has been a, a thing for them the past few years. They couldn't even make it in uh, last year. You know, Chicago bounced them. Uh, it's an ongoing thing with a team that apparently has it, the, the two of the best players in hockey and can't win a playoff series, uh, a Calgary team uh, that struggled, uh, a Toronto team that can't win a first round series. And everyone said, hey, this is the perfect year for the Leafs to make it to the semifinals because they don't have to face Boston. They don't have to face Tampa. It didn't matter. It didn't matter at all because they faced, again, they underperformed in the playoffs. So, uh, I'm just saying in the, you know, I mean, if we look at it and we can't, because again, it, uh, the realignment, the way it was this year uh, eliminates all of that. Uh, if you're looking, you know, if you're looking at it, do I think uh, in a, the way these teams played this year, do I think uh, in a regular season where uh, Montreal, Toronto, Edmonton, Calgary, Winnipeg played an 82 game schedule and traveled uh, East Coast, West Coast. Do I think uh, they would have? Uh, those five teams would have made the playoffs? No, I don't. Do I think three of the five teams made it, would have made, make the playoffs? Yeah, possibly because uh, teams like Edmonton, Winnipeg, and Calgary would be playing the LA Kings, the Anaheim Ducks, the uh, Arizona Coyotes. They would have San Jose Sharks. They would have been playing those ones and. Toronto and, you know, Toronto, Ottawa and Montreal would have been playing the New York Islanders, the Tampa Bays, the Boston's, Washington's and the Pittsburgh. So uh, in the grand scheme of things, do I think all five teams? No, absolutely not. Uh, do I think three of them? Three would be the the top end of those teams making the playoffs. Uh, two is probably the bottom end. It would probably would have been 
the Leafs and somebody else. So those are my thoughts. So we all have opinions. They're like belly buttons, man. We all have one. <laughs> no, I agree with everything you're saying there. And uh, it's one of those things you'll never really know. This is why we live in the present. We are where we are right now. Um, the series price, you guys find on the screen, plus 380. Uh, Golden Knights, minus 510. Like I said, one of the biggest underdogs and favorites um, in semifinal history in the NHL. Not the biggest, but one of the biggest up there historically. Uh, Karen, before we get to best bets and uh, talk about what we have up today uh, at the website at wagertalk.com, I wanted to mention two things. One is power plays. The Canadians have sort of got it back together with their power play, but uh, special teams. I, I feel I believe this series will be won and lost on special teams. The Vegas Golden Knights have a dangerous power play, an unbelievable power play. The best power play the Canadians have seen yet this year and, of course, in the playoffs as well. Huge key for them is going to be staying out of the box. But I want to mention as well the physicality aspect. You know, I always say – the recipe for a good playoff team is goaltending, physicality, and depth. And Vegas has a lot of that. They have a red-hot goaltender with Marc-Andre Fleury. They have an unbelievable power play. And they have depth that can show up. And I think the, the only chance the Canadians have to be really successful is if they continue to do what they've done and to forecheck the hell out of their top lines on the other team and shut them down, keep the puck away from their defensive zone. Um, if you look at this top line for the Canadians, they average a lot of zone time, offensive zone time, Karm, but they have like zero goals. They just get dumped the puck in and maintain possession and try and keep those top guys on the other team out of your net, out of your side. But uh, when I look at the physicality aspect, I kind of give it to Vegas. You know, Montreal has seen all four lines go out there, dump the puck in and hit defensemen. Or look at the Vegas side. They're probably top five in in, in size in the league. Uh, all four of their all four of their lines have guys that are huge that can hit that aren't really afraid of the physical aspect of hockey. And when you look at Winnipeg and you look at Toronto, they had a few guys that weren't expecting to get hit. And, and I'm curious what your thoughts are on the whole power play and special teams thing, and how physicality might affect uh, either team really. Well. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll touch on it from the physicality point of view. This is probably the one series where the Montreal Canadiens are going to face a physical team that they did not face in the first two rounds. I didn't see it in the Toronto series. Uh, I certainly didn't see it in the uh, Winnipeg series. Uh, I didn't see anybody getting in front of uh, Carey Price and making his life uncomfortable for him. Toronto didn't do it. Uh, uh, Toronto was a Let's get an extra pass in there. Uh, let's try and win these games. Sort of in a fancy, uh, I, it's the best way I can ex explain it is, is they're just a, a team trying to, 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 to make it look fancy in getting there. Um, the Winnipeg series, uh, Montreal gave them absolutely nothing. And from a physical point of view, point of view Winnipeg wasn't there. Uh, you can look at that one hit. That, was, that had nothing to do with uh, the whole series, the Shifley hit there. Uh, Winnipeg wasn't physical at all. This is going to be a much different game. Uh, this Vegas team is big. They can dump. They can chase. They're going to get the body on you, and they kind of wear you down. Uh, they lost, you know, uh, those those first two games in Colorado, made the adjustment, and were a little more physical in that game as well, too, and won that series. So uh, we'll see what happens. And, you know, let's look at the other aspect of this, Andrew, is uh, – it's a full crowd, uh, pretty much a full crowd in Vegas watching these games. Uh, they can they can rattle you. The fans can rattle you. It's something that didn't happen. It wasn't there in Toronto because the because of the situation here north of the border, and they only started allowing uh, a uh, a splattering of fans, 500, 1,000 fans. Doesn't make a difference. Vegas is a completely different thing. They're right there um, uh, against the boards. Uh, it, it's a much different. Uh, feel to the game. Uh, like I said, I, I just can't lay the prices. Uh, I haven't survived in this industry uh, laying um, minus 275s and minus 300s. They ju I just think at, in the grand scheme of things, whether you believe they're going to win or not, that kills your bankroll. So I just can't lay those prices uh, myself. That's me. If you want to do them, go ahead, right ahead, guys. I'm just not going to do it. Physical wise, uh, I just think Vegas is uh, much more physical. They're going to get in front. They're going to cause problems in front of the net. 
for Carey Price. And ultimately, this is why they're going to win this series. Before we uh, wrap things up and get into uh, show best bets, I want to jump into some props as well and go over a few different things and just kind of pick your brain, Karm. But I, I did want to ask your thoughts on the puck line play in this series, whether it's minus one and a half or plus one and a half. And I remember all year long saying that it's it's a very, in my opinion, um, you know, it, you're, you're, it's not a strong wager taking the plus one and a half, in my opinion, in baseball or hockey because you're turning an underdog plus money wager into a minus and you're pretty much betting on a team to lose by one, you know, and you're giving yourself that insurance, but in the playoffs, we've seen it be very successful yesterday, another one goal game in the NHL playoffs. If you took the dog at the plus price, you had a losing ticket. If you had took the plus one and a half, you won your wager. So as far as this series goes in particular, Carm, would you ever lean towards either a minus one and a half or a plus one and a half, or is this something that you could see, uh, being a little bit different for each game. I think it's 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 game specific or game dependent or with, with whatever the proper term is. But uh, usually when you see these, you know, for the underdog in a game, you see the plus one and a half. You see you got to lay uh, quite a bit of juice, you know, in the 170, 180 range sometimes. it's That's not the case here. I think Montreal is uh, plus a goal and a half minus 125 that's that's not a lot of big to lay getting a goal and a half you know the getting a goal and a half for me is always you when you watch enough hockey uh, it's that empty net goal uh, in games uh, and in a game like this you know if the, if the canadians are down a goal they're pulling their goalie with a couple of minutes left uh, so you're now sweating that empty net goal that you don't want uh, much like if you take the canadians you're only getting plus 105 on your money and you're going to be sweating if they're uh, if they're up a goal. You're going to be sweating that empty netter to get you the win. So uh, I'm probably uh, more likely, Andrew, just because it's only minus 125, more likely to if I think it's going to be a very close game in game one. Uh, and yesterday was a close game. That uh, taking the plus one and a half uh, might not be a, a bad way to go. But you have to believe that the Canadians are going to be in the game in order to take that. Definitely. And like you said, it's usually not that price during the regular season and with a lot of matchups. And today we are getting a good price with that. Running over a few props, there's a couple I wanted to mention. And one of them is the team shots on goal or the goalie save prop. A little bit different, but a little bit similar as well. Uh, These only come out later in the playoffs and I have been seeing them a little bit. I gave out a few on the show last week. And well, for we're seeing home team shots on goal, 31 and a half shaded to the under. And away team shots on goal at 27 and a half shaded towards the over. Or you can bet both teams combined at 58 and a half shaded towards the over at minus 115. And Carm, a lot of the time I look towards over on these props later in the series and probably under early in the series because it's kind of a feeling things out process to start the series off. But that's not the case in this series. You mentioned about traffic in front of the net. We have two world-class goaltenders with Flurry and Price. Uh, we will see some nicer goals, but we're also going to see some very messy, sloppy, and I think what you'd call greasy goals in this series. And all of those goals come from shots. You you have to shoot the puck. You mentioned about the Leafs making a little of that extra pass. I found the exact same thing with the Winnipeg Jets, potentially even the same thing with the Minnesota Wild, potentially even the same thing with the Colorado Avalanche. Now we have two teams that will not hesitate to put the puck on the net and see what happens. So over 58 and a half, both teams combined shots is a play I am looking at. Uh, Also, you know, for the Canadians, I have found it so hard to look at point props and goal props for them just because, like I said, they have four lines that are relatively equal as far as scoring and their ice time. But Nick Suzuki has has been on a roll for this team. He has developed a lot of consistency, and he is minus 105 to get a point in tonight's game. That is a look for me um, that I have taken a look at and I have grabbed. And as far as player goals, I know Karm has one he's going to mention, but I have another one I'm going to touch on. Uh, It's Jonathan Marcheseau to score a goal, plus 200, and Alex Tuck to score a goal, plus 240 which I thought was a great price. I, I think Alex Tuck is a great playoff player for the Vegas Golden Knights. As far as the Canadians, I'm staying off these goal props because, like I said, 
it's kind of sporadic for them who finds the goal uh goal scoring sheet and i feel like that works in their favor is there anything you're looking at as far as the prop market goes yeah the only one i think uh you know i looked at a couple of the 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 uh vegas goal scorers i'm gonna land on one for today's uh show pick you know initially i looked at and i might still play him andrew is you know former montreal player max 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 pacioretty he's plus 140 there uh i'm gonna go a different way uh as far as props go uh i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna take mark stone who's having a very good playoffs right now uh he's playing he's same thing plus 140 to score um i i love these press places when they're uh above a buck 30 buck 35 when they get into that 140 150 range uh i really like them so this is one that i'm going to take for the show uh mark stone to score plus 140 get some traffic in front of the net uh let's get some uh goals in this game uh we haven't seen it up until now andrew for as far as carry price goes but he uh, and maybe it's a product of the Montreal uh, defense collapsing in front of them and not letting anyone get the price that they've good, they've done a good job of protecting him and keeping guys uh, from rattling him. But um, I'm hoping Vegas finds a way of doing it. I'm sure you're not, but that's going to be my uh, my show best bet. Um, I want to also mention because uh, we can't let uh, we started off the show by just showing a vid, and I usually mention something. Um, Anyone picking 10 games in a row correctly is absolutely amazing. Uh, uh, it's so tough. And you hit on the weekend 10 straight, and you're actually 10 and 0 with these on the season. MLB, 5% plays. Uh, absolute kudos to you, man. The Padres. Thank you. Um, that's absolutely unbelievable to hit uh, 10 straight 5% plays in MLB. So kudos to you on that, my friend. Thanks a lot, Carm. I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody that uh, grabbed the play from me at Wager Talk. And uh, it was an exciting fashion. You know, it's 2-1 late in the game. All of a sudden, we get another grand slam uh, for the second straight 5% play. A grand slam comes into play. And I see seven runs on the board for the Padres. So a great inning and a great ending uh, to that game. So 10 straight, like Carm said. Never too late, guys, to grab an MLB season package. You can grab it up until the All-Star break if you don't want to just go for the entire season. At my profile page, you can grab my MLB every play uh, just until the MLB All-Star break. Carmen, I want to run right back to you because you're having a phenomenal soccer season in general. A Euro Cup is off to a great start. I'm betting it in very low volume. What do you have up for grabs in NHL, uh, NBA, MLB, or Euro Cup tonight? Yeah, so I, I told you guys I am not taking a play in the NHL tonight. Um, in all likelihood, I'm just going to stick to the goal scoring prop and uh, and with that, uh, a play on the over at plus money. Um, we'll look at the sides the rest of the way, so I'll have some opinions on, on obviously on the sides and stuff. But if I'm not putting my money on it, I'm not going to give you a side play because my money is not on it. So uh, I'm just not going to give it up. With that said, a couple plays up uh, starting at noon in uh, Euro action, uh, a noon game, a three o'clock game, uh, five and zero with sides yesterday in uh, in both uh, the Euro 2020 tournament and the Copa America. You can get all the plays throughout the tournament and uh, both tournaments. I'm throwing the Copa America in um, as a bonus. 199 bucks gets every single play. You can get those over at wagertalk.com or buy them individually. Uh, it's nine dollar Mondays at Wager Talk, so you can get the two plays today for only nine dollars. Uh, that's pretty much it for me, Andrew. Awesome stuff, Carm. Killing it in both Copa America and the Euro Cup, uh, guys. For me, so far, it's just one four percent MLB best bet plus seventy percent ROI since the middle of April. Like Carm said, fresh off that uh, tenth straight five percent winner, feeling pretty good. Just one play isolated so far in the MLB for tonight. But the, the best bet is going to be that bet I already gave out to you guys on this show, and it's over five and a half games in the series between the Montreal Canadiens and the Vegas Golden Knights. I'm not saying it's a, it's a sure thing. The Canadians will win this. You guys know I'm a fan of the team. I know I'm going to get comments from you guys saying I'm being biased. This is not a biased wager. This series will be competitive. Maybe the Canadians come up short. Maybe they don't, but I believe it will be a very, very tight series over five and a half games. 
Uh, both teams with great goaltending, great defense. I think it's going to be very competitive. And the Montreal Canadiens, guys, 19 straight wins in the playoffs with Carey Price if they score three goals or more. I'll back them to at least take this uh, to six games and potentially take the series. But over five and a half games is the way I'm going in this series between the Knights and the Canadians. Carmine looking at Mark Stone to, Mark, Mark Stone to score a goal at plus 140. He has been red hot for the Golden Knights. Uh, best of luck, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in right here on Puck Time on Wager Talk TV. Wager Talk today with Steve Merrill and Lawrence Presman up shortly after this video. Each and every Monday is $9 Monday at wagertalk.com. All daily picks packages are priced at only $9, including $40 5% best bets. As an added bonus, all new users will receive $25 in wager bucks credited to their accounts available for immediate use after their initial $9 Monday purchase. So make sure to take advantage of $9 Mondays at wagertalk.com.